Now please join me in the call to worship. When all we have hoped for and trusted in has let us down. There is Christ who reaches out to us. When the world seems dark and despair threatens to close in upon us. There is Christ reaching out for us. Come and let us worship the Lord who is always ready to reach out to us. Let us pray. We come into your presence, O Lord, with so many burdens and concerns on our hearts. Help us to be open to your words of healing and restoration. Bring us closer to you. Enable us to discern your will for us that we may serve you more faithfully by serving others in need. We ask this in the name of the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join in singing the opening hymn of praise.
So, um, do I have some children today? I do, okay. Hi guys. Yeah? How are you? Good. Good. How's your week been? Decent. Decent? She's doing good right now. Yeah. A few weeks ago you weren't as positive, were you? No. Okay. Well, that's good. All right. Well, things have turned. So this is good. That's kind of how life goes, huh? In cycles. So we're going to talk about that for a second here. Um, I would like to know what you think of when you think of butterflies, we've already talked about it before, and a cross. Can you see how they might come together? Mm. They both have cycles. They do, okay. What kind of cycle does a cross have? Yeah, I don't know, right? Yeah, don't have that one. Okay, we know about the butterfly though, right? Okay, we got that one down. <clears throat> so the cross, you, you can look at the cross, there's one right there, it's all lit up. So when we look at that, what, what do we think of? Jesus. Because, Jesus? yeah, God. Anytime you see a cross, you think of that? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. What's that mean to you? He died. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we ever get past the death part? Well, I'm going to teach us how to think about that, okay? When we look up there, we see an empty cross, right? Protestants, that's what we are. We look at it, and we're like, oh, that's an empty cross. And it's empty for a reason. Life has cycles. You're correct. We're born, we live, and then we die. But... It doesn't stop there, does it? Because we're really not dying. No. We're just going to another form of life. We think of that. And when you look at the cross, that's our portal to the new life that awaits us. Pretty cool, huh? It gives us some hope. So I wanted to ask you something. What do you think that has to do with a butterfly? Yes. You know, it's only taken me three months, but you guys are going to walk away with a lesson one way or another. Exactly. You know? And then what happens with that butterfly? What's a butterfly do? Tell me. Eggs. Yeah. Oh. No, it does something else before it dies, though. It's got 200 days of living. What's the butterfly's purpose? to give new life, right? Because it goes from flower to flower and pollinates. If we don't have butterflies, we have a problem with our ecosystem. Yeah. Did you know there's butterflies in Israel? Mm -hmm. You did? Do you know how many species? How? How many? Somebody guess. A lot. A lot, okay. You know what? I was going to tell, I, I can tell you guys, but I want to tell them in the sermon too. I should have done, a, a, you know what I should have done? <gasps> I should have done a raffle on it. And I should have made you guys all put in. And I want to know who gets the closest answer to how many species of butterflies there, in, there is in Israel. And don't Google it. That's cheating. Oh, we didn't take away their phones. We should have taken away their phones, huh? Yep, there you go. There's 110. So we have butterflies on the palms because, you know, butterflies rest on, what do we say? Milkweed. Okay, because they need real strong, sturdy things to protect them from the rain and all that stuff. And they have a long flight, too. So that's a lot of little work for something that weighs less than an ounce. Okay. So here's the deal. So we're looking at the palms. They were hanging on there. I bet there were butterflies on those palms 
that they had laying down for Jesus going to the cross. That's what I think. And I think that new life awaited in more ways than one because Jesus was going to rise again. And the butterflies show to us that they're pollinating for new life. I think that's our good news message today. What do you think about that? I think it's a perfect blend. I do. And you know what else is perfect? This candy. That is perfect. This candy right here. Do you know, because I Googled it. You can Google that. I don't care. Do you know why it's perfect? It has the exact amount of chocolate with peanut butter. 50-50. And I think life is about being a perfect balance at times, don't you? So we got to learn how to love so we can find that new life and to let go of that old. See, you're not old enough for it. Let go of all that old is a problem. But for some of us, as we get older, it is. So if you take this message now, when you get to be our age, you got it. You'll know how to do it. We're going to accept the strength that God gives to us for our new life all the time. And we're going to remember in perfect balance with the Reese's peanut butter cup. Do you like how I put that all together just like that? Yeah. Pretty impressive, huh? I worked on it just for you guys. You guys want to pray with me then? Okay. Dear Lord God, life is hard. We need sweets. Help us with the Reese's peanut butter cup to remember that as we accept changes in life and the lessons you give to us, in your love there is a perfect balance. Just as there's a perfect balance with the butterflies and the cross, not dying and staying in death, but letting the old go so that new life will bloom and pollinate now and forever. Amen. Okay, everybody take one. You know, here's the deal. How many of you have I got? One, two, three, six? Well, you know what? You can have more than one. What do you think of that? Or do you guys hate Reese's? Oh, okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure I picked a good one today. Everybody chimed in on that one. Thank you. Um, let's see. Everybody, you got two? And two. Oh, did I give you some? Okay. Don got three. Don got. Okay. Don't worry. You know what? Next week, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Let's just leave it at that and have a happy Easter. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. This morning, I had um, a special request for a prayer. Um, Don has a friend that they have a granddaughter who's only less than a week old, and they're in ICU. So if you could just remember that, that thought as we've come before God together in prayer. Are there... I, I, uh, there's too many of you to open that up. Uh, sorry. Okay, so... Just so you know, I'm still new here in case you haven't figured that out. And so that led me open to almost ask you guys for prayer concerns. And we're not going to do that because we might be here for a little bit. Or who knows, maybe you guys won't want to share publicly and it'll be real quick. You guys are a tough crowd today. I'm telling you. So any of the prayer concerns that you have on your own hearts and minds will go before God in prayer. I do know of another incident where time uh, management and the, be a and the ability to live through the waiting period uh, for strength and peace would be good for another particular incident that we have. And you can probably think of some more, those that have been going through surgeries and such, if we will lift them up at our heart from our hearts at this time, and then we'll come together in, um, in a corporate prayer in just a second. <sighs> 
Dear God of all new life and redeeming love, we collectively come together to you as one. We gather in this time, in this space, searching for your being within our hearts and our minds. May our collective whole become united in you as we find strength and promise and enlightenment for this thought of new life. In you, we find redemption and restoration. We find healing, kindness, wholeness, and laughter, joy. And in you comes a renewal, the sense of hope and purpose. Bless upon each of us our understanding of your purpose in this time and place that will take us to our next station in life. And as we take time to reflect on where we've been and that walk that we have had that's taken us this far to the cross, we ask that you help us to let go of the parts we need to and to take with us the learning adventures that have helped us so that we may become stronger in our days yet ahead. With this, may we accept your forgiveness. As we reflect, may we not do this in shame or judgment, but in joy, knowing that your grace and your mercy offer to us forgiveness beyond our understandings, and that your strength can give us this acceptance of your gift of grace, mercy, and love, so that we too may not become imprisoned by our past, but become new life givers for our present. May the peace that you fill us with then share that peace of unity for a healing among us all. As we look to the cross, may we see your colors of love to live among us each day learning how to deal with the challenges that life may throw our way, knowing that we do not die to this, but we actually become a portal into a new life adventure through the understandings of your Holy Spirit that lead and guide us, through our choices that we make and our relating with one another for the new opportunities that you give to us. May we find wholeness and completion. It is through the walk in Christ, then, where we begin to understand this holy act of loving sacrifices. How it is we go about living our life. How it is we go about relating with one another. How it is we share love by our hearts, by our heads, by our mouths, by our touch. May you grant to us the courage to walk together this holy week in a life for the completion that we seek, in the renewal sense of our own right. By the gift of life that you give to us, may we take it, pollinate it, and become new life givers of redemption, restoration, and renewal. This walk and in the next that you take us to, it is through Christ we pray together. Amen.
Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, John 12, 12 through 16. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered these things had been written about him and had been done to him. I just want to say this morning, we are talking about a particular purpose in life. A purpose between butterflies and the cross is new life. Both butterflies and crosses represent new life through the path of death. And today, we draw this parallel. We draw it out in focus for us so that we can find hope and love and new life. Well, butterflies are fun to watch, and we have enjoyment greatly how such a lightweight little insect can do such beauty in the world. Did you know that they pollinate over 75% of the world's flowering plants? And that's helpful to bees. And the world without bees would not have honey, and the world without honey would be way less sweet, we all can agree. So there's a benefit here. Butterflies directly impact our Palm Sunday story today because butterflies are in the Holy Land. Chances are, in my mind, as I told the kids, butterflies were there that day so long ago. When Jesus rode the donkey in the processional that he had before his night of betrayal, before the cross. Butterflies use the palms for shelter, like milkweed, pollinating them and giving off new life, especially in windstorms and rainstorms. Something has to protect them. And since this image of the butterfly is something that we've been working with, I'm taking the butterfly to the cross today. As I've said with the kids, did you know? You know now. There are 110 different butterfly species in Israel. So with this information, when we start to visualize a reality of new life giving flight among the Holy Land, we start to experience the cross in a dimensional way, closing out one way of life in favor of a new way of living. That can transpire. What a thought. An old way of life, dying, to graciously make room for new within us, a new way to be birthed, to begin blooming and rebirthing, new life among us. We see that in our house plants, it makes sense that it would happen with us, a beautiful image of colors for all to feast on. Now, I find it strange that you and I are among the human race, and you and I are most successfully the hardest people, creations, to embrace this understanding of letting go of the old and embracing the new. If you want to know what I'm talking about, think of TLC Channel Hoarders. Have you ever seen that show? Yeah, that's people having a hard time of letting go of some old. Letting go of the old is like baggage weighing us down. We all can agree. It's like being a turtle with the tortoise shell. How would you feel if you had to carry your house on your back everywhere you went? You and I nowadays don't have to do that. We don't have to pack up our tents like they did in Israel's day and be nomadic and walk around from place to place with the 
tabernacle with us and then set up camp every so many miles and, and have our lives in that fashion. No, we do it the American way and a lot of the world now. We buy our homes and we pay our taxes. And we have this little plot of land that we put our physical address on and we call that home. And all the stuff that we take with us in our lives and all, we pile it into our garage or our basement or our attic or any other crevice we can find. And then we're free. Free to fly around like a butterfly, offering new life to new creation. And the miracle in this butterfly, for example, is the hope and promise that God's creation is able to have new life in us when we're willing to sacrifice and trust all to the ways of Christ. How so? Well, the butterfly wasn't born a butterfly. The butterfly was born a caterpillar. Then it has a colossic meltdown. And in that meltdown, the gift of new life gets birthed and it transforms like a transformer into a butterfly. And then the butterfly has a new purpose and it can do what the caterpillar never could do. Gives new life. And from a ground view to an aerial view, everything and all the changes and the, um, and the life-giving properties for that develop and grow and mature along that path of life. So the caterpillar was going to the cross in one way, and then it became its portal in the chrysalis and it took the walk through the cross into a new way of life. So however we look at all of this with the end results of the butterfly, we, God's children, are to follow this path of Christ for a journey that will lead us into the new. We become willing then to trust and to understand that sacrifice of love within ourselves to die to the old, so that we can make room for the new. Let's go ahead and put it out there. After all, you need a little history lesson somewhat. The old is what killed Christ. It did. The new is what resurrected Christ. The old was the old order, the structures, the mindset, the power controls, all the stuff that we humans still have here with us even now. On this Palm Sunday, then, our lesson and our inspiration is the guidance to follow life's lessons of actions taught within these biblical stories. They may be outdated and may have happened 2,000 years ago, but the human spirit is still alive and needing to be taught one generation to the next. That's why we spend time bringing the old into the new. So we spend words and candy and all this stuff that they may not have had back then to bring an old message into new life so we can now apply it to how we're living now. It keeps us from crystallizing the message, but yet letting it continue to live and breathe and grow. So simply put, Jesus' path to the cross was as much of a political statement as a spiritual, ethical, and moral statement. The spirituality Jesus taught in his message of ministry was learning how to love through a lens of needing to look within for our growth and to find our answers so that we can mature and develop. The key to all of this was in, for his ministry get this, this is refreshing, love is not mandated or coerced. You can't make somebody love God, and God doesn't want you, us to make them love them. We can't scare somebody into being saved. We do that, something's wrong. Jesus' ministry was a ministry of love with free will, aligning with God our creator, on our own accord. 
Love is the path to the cross. Love is the new life giver. Love is our hope for tomorrow. Love is a death of old and birthing of new. And not many people, let's face it, hate butterflies. Love is the butterfly, and the butterfly's life knows the principles of the cross and fulfills the principles now and beyond for the more of tomorrow. Love builds up this earth, us among one another. So our hope is that in being followers of the cross, knowing that we too will survive our meltdowns in life, and we all have them, we keep focused in the reason of what we're created for. We're created to learn how to love. Like the butterfly, you and I are created for this, to give new life and to accept this path with other people. That's our purpose. We are a part of life's creation system, so we can't opt out of it. We can make it really ugly if we wanted to, but we're born, we're stuck in this path. Let's make it the best we can together. The key to all of this working then is the cross is the meltdown. That's our meltdown. The, I'm looking at the cross. You Well, look at that cross. Our meltdown is going to the empty cross that offers us a new way of life into a path of love and transformation. That's where we're created. We, we go through this. This is our life cycle. We don't get a choice. We just get a choice in how we do it. It's when we follow this journey of inner refinement then, we gain an inner peace and balance. Healing, hope, wholeness for recovery in our new way of life is, becomes our inspiration. It's our joy. Healing and hope and wholeness for recovery in our new way of life. Suffering is not the end. We may be going through it, but that's not the end. It's merely a refinement process that takes us into a deeper, newer level of rebirthing life within us in one form or another, in one aspect or another, in one way or another, depending where we are in that life. Hope and promise are our ways that there is new life transformation when we accept the call with an affirmative answer. Yes, Jesus, we will follow. As Jesus calls, then, won't we follow and answer him in this call? Affirming our choices that we made once long ago, reaffirming our choices today that we are recommitted in Christ for a transformation of love and birth to begin today forward. Love is like the butterfly as Dolly Parton sings so eloquently. May our songs become that beautiful. A light of color within and, with and toward the crosses that we are walking toward. Bearing new opportunities for us in the spirit of grace, living grace. God within us, living fully. And may God guide us in each step mercifully in our journeys as we go with our crosses into new life this day forward. Amen. Our sermon response is Blessed Assurance, Chalice Hymn 543, verses 1 and 3.
as we celebrate the power of the Lord's resurrection this Easter with other disciples of Christ churches all over the world, we're asking you to consider giving generously to the Easter special offering which supports the general ministries of the Christian church. Your gift to the Easter offering will support a wide range of services and ministries that disciples provide here in the United States and around the world. The fund supports health and social service ministries that meet basic needs for the hungry and homeless. It supports collaborative response in the wake of disaster. It will provide mental health resources for pastors and congregations, leadership development programs to nurture new church leaders, support for hospital and military chaplains serving around the world, and it will aid Christian colleges and theological institutions that nurture Christian leaders. Your gift to this Easter special offering allows us to do more together than we could ever do alone. More ministry, more impact, more of God's love in the world. In a moment, we will have a video to give us more details about the special Easter offering. You can place your gift in the white special offering envelopes in your pews today and next Sunday and mark it Easter offering. And thank you for giving. Here's the video. We come to Easter from different congregations and ministries. We come to Easter with many generations and traditions. We come to Easter with multiple languages. We come to Easter united with five words of greeting and celebration. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia 라는 말씀은 믿음의 확언입니다. Verdaderamente Cristo ha resucitado. Alleluia. Le Christ est vraiment ressuscité. Alleluia. Christ has risen indeed. Alleluia. Jesus has risen indeed. Alleluia. On Easter, we celebrate the power of the resurrection together with the whole body of Christ. With faith in the risen Savior, we receive this good news with grief and hope. We are still recovering from COVID. We come to Easter with gratitude and gifts to share. Our gifts on Easter make it possible for us to rise and serve from our doorsteps to the ends of the earth. We are set free to rise together in shared ministry. Gifts to the Easter special offering support ministries that help disciples share the limitless love of God that overcomes death. Our gifts support neighbors near and far, stewardship education and leadership development, and provide spiritual and mental health support for persons and communities that need it the most. We are set free to rise together in shared service. Our gifts support hospital and military chaplains serving around the world our gifts provide resources and critical presence for congregations and communities that are sharing the good news every day, and educational resources for children, families, and youth. We are set free to rise together in shared language. General ministries of the Christian Church share the good news that the love of Jesus is alive through new congregations worshiping in a variety of languages and worship styles. Relationships with global mission partners serving in communities impacted by conflict and climate change. Opportunities like General Assembly where the church can gather for worshipful work and so much more. We rise together. The table was set for us to receive and share the gifts of God together. Together we can do more than we can alone. Together let's take this message to a world consumed by fear. Together, let's support our ministries with our gifts and our lives. Together, let's greet the future that God has prepared. Together, let's rise with Jesus.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, we lift these gifts to you as you have given your son to us in sacrificial love. May we too make sacrifices for you. For let this church be able to give and to represent you well in the ministries that you call to us. Through the givings, may they uh, go out into the world, creating new life, wholeness, and peace within us and within these, without these, beyond these walls. For it is in your name we pray. Amen. Tongue tied. I would like to share with you a Palm Sunday Easter meditation by Rebecca Barlow Jordan. On Palm Sunday, they did not see him coming, not him. They saw hope rekindled, an end to their injustice, and an easier path to follow. They waved their palm offerings and laid down their finest clothes, but they saw only a temporary king, not a suffering servant. On Palm Sunday, they sang hallelujah from the depths of their hearts and would have crowned him there if they could, but they didn't understand. They didn't see Jesus, Son of God, Messiah, soon incoming King. They misunderstood. His kingdom was not of this world. On Palm Sunday, Jesus knew, astride on the back of a donkey, he knew why he had come. The Son of God humbled himself, set aside royalty, and exchanged heaven's robes for a towel and a basin of water. He received their praise that day, but he saw their hearts, young and old alike, and he wept for them, and then he died for them. He also died for us. We gather around this table to remember his sacrifice for us, his body given for us, his blood shed for us. We now do this in remembrance of our Lord and Savior. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, today we're celebrating Palm Sunday when the followers of Jesus lined the streets of Jerusalem to praise him and honor him with palms, laying their garments down across his path. It was an extravagant demonstration of their love. It's hard to believe that just a few days later, many of these same people would turn against Jesus. They would cry out for his death. Please, God, help us never to betray our Lord and Savior like that. Help us to be true followers, loving you, obedient to your word, living and sharing our faith with others who may not know you. 
as we approach the table to share communion this morning, we want to honor Jesus and remember his sacrifice as he instructed us to do. Please renew your spirit within us. Strengthen us to be faithful followers. In the name of Jesus, who gave his life for us. Amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, inviting them to take and eat, for this is his body given for us. And then he poured the wine into the cup, saying, this is the blood of my body poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you, proclaiming my death until I come again. All are welcome to this table of grace and mercy.
Okay, so um, before the closing hymn, I want to make sure that I invite all of you um, Thursday at 6.30. Chuck hasn't got his food yet, and if he has, well, we'll go get more. Um, you're more than welcome to come. In fact, I encourage you to come to the Monday Thursday service. It's more of a Monday Thursday service, not a traditional Seder meal. It's a Passover meal that is very edible and good. And then we will come in to hear for the um, communion and reenactment of a, a play. It's very meaningful. They've been working very hard on it. Um, we have probably up to about 12 people or so that are now included in that. I encourage you to come and be a part of that this holy week with us. The sign up is outside in the narthex, by the way. Our closing hymn is All Glory, Laud, and Honor, Chalice Hymn 192, verses 1 and 3. If you'll stand as we prepare to close out our service together. And so I stand corrected. It is 6 o'clock on Thursday. If you come at 6.30, the meal will already be consumed. <laughs> May God's love redeem and fill our hearts with all the colors of the rainbow. May we fly with the spirit of freedom and inspiration in the love and joy and new life-giving elements of the butterfly. May new life which awaits us find our hearts and offer us restoration. May the love in life give and heal us all. Amen. <laughs>